Thank you to the Decoding Nature sponsors, Five Rivers Metro Parks Foundation, Cox Arboretum Foundation, Wagner Subaru, and Wegerson Gardens Foundation. For this final episode of Decoding Nature, we focus on the future. You know, this section right here of Eastwood Park, this was created in the 80s. It takes a lot of planning to come up with new stuff, and today we're gonna learn all about it. The future is ours with the Metro Parks. Amy Dingle is going to meet with us to talk about the ongoing role Five Rivers Metro Parks plays in connecting people with nature. Amy, great hey. seeing you right here, that's awesome. It's good to see you out on the water. I love being Fantastic. out on the water. There, yeah, boom. <laughs> there are so many places to get on the water, the Metro Parks. Oh I, boy, there are. I love it. And you know, I'm just discovering this whole lagoon action. It's beautiful. There's so much natural amenity here. And Dayton's so lucky because we have so many waterways out here to discover, and especially in a kayak. Yeah. Nature's a uniter, right? We're attracted to water. People love to be by water. And, we have great parks all around our water. Our, our rivers are what help define our metro parks. We see them as a place to invite people and be connectors, right? And help people get outside and, and be a means actually to help. They're a common place, public space for the community to come together and, and be together. There's so many benefits to spending time outside, you know, and we hope to deliver that message to residents and let them understand the benefits and the the well-being, the physical, mental, and emotional well-being. It's so impactful to them. It, it, spending time outside is like natural medicine. Yeah, right? it's healing. Yeah. yeah. It reduces stress and anxiety. It lowers our heart rate and our blood pressure, but it increases our, our memory and our mental capacity as well as gives us energy and just makes us happy. Yeah, feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's good. That's my favorite word, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> One point, Dayton was listed on a most dying city. I just, it feels ridiculous to me. You know, it's such a great story though. Within 10 years, we changed that around. You know, with, with the rebranding of Dayton as the outdoor adventure capital of the Midwest, and the innovation and the collaboration around this town. We have so many accolades under us for the future. We've accessed all these natural amenities. Parks play a big role in that. But really, this town comes together and works together. And we've, we've had the ability to really um, be presented in, in national magazines all over the place. We've been in National Geographic as the best rebirth of the American city. And we've also been in Outside Magazine as one of the top 25 outdoor towns. And that is all because of everyone feeling proud to live here. They, we have all these natural amenities and parks that we can take advantage of and create access that we hope retains our residents that grow up here or come here to school. But we also hope it attracts newcomers so that people can just continue to go outside their back door within 10 minutes of their home and work, live, learn, and play. Well, speaking of the future, the children are the future, right? That's a song or something cool, but setting corniness aside, that's, that's real. I mean, Five Rivers Metro Parks is focused on educating the youth with animal ambassadors, and we're gonna go see one? Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait to show you one of, one of our animal ambassadors. And we use them in our schools and for outreach to help make connections to nature. Okay, well, I'm really into birds of prey, so I have a feeling that's going to happen. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's go, go, let's let's go, go meet it. River. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> so I get it now. River is the screech owl. Yeah, you got it. We have birds, turtles, snakes, and salamanders, several different types of animals that are animal ambassadors, and they really help us speak and make connections with youth specifically in the schools, yeah. but also with outreach with the community to help try and make a personal connection right. to the animal to speak for um, environmental justice, right? And the fact that we need people and our residents to extend their backyards and their spaces to protecting the animals. Kids spend about six minutes a day outside and six to eight hours behind a screen. That's essentially them waiting at the bus stop. 
these animal ambassadors help make the connection, they intrigue their interest to try to want to go outside and look for them or care about the space that they live in yeah. um, to extend you know, the importance of our parks for the future. I am ecstatic to meet with Carrie Scarf to hear about the grand vision of utilizing nature to connect East and West Dayton, known as the Dayton Riverfront Plan. We're somewhere unusual. I don't feel like this is a metro park, but it is. It's a metro park, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're at Sunrise? Sunrise Metro Park. The concept here is when you come to the river here and, and this is as beautiful as Riverscape or better, and the other side of the river, which is Sunset Park, okay. is that beautiful too. And then you connect it with this beautiful park over the river, a pedestrian bridge that swoops up from here and goes across to no sunset. Way. Oh yeah. That's crazy. Yes. And so when when you come to the river, whether you come to the river from the west side or the east side, from Wolf Creek or from downtown, yep. you're at the river with everybody else who's at the river. You're not on one side or the other. And we're united as a as a community here. People come to nature in a lot of different ways. You know, they come they come for adventure, they come for serenity or solace. Yeah. They come to exercise or recreate or commune. And we have to consider all of that and create those opportunities for all sorts of different people. You know, people have different levels of comfort with nature. Right. So we think about all of that. And we are, we're river based. We're five rivers metro right. parks. That yeah. wasn't, you know, that wasn't a cute slogan. We are truly based on the rivers. And we have amassed corridors along our waterways to pr promote wildlife. And so much has come back, but it also gives a great opportunity for this community to explore and, and really get connected to our greatest natural resource, which for us is our, our water. There was a water, yeah. Right. Those are the things that, that really kind of anchor us when we look at the big picture and look, look at our whole system and say, you know, which needs aren't we meeting? Who aren't we connecting with? How can we do better to, to get everyone in the way that they want to right. connected to nature? Before we end this series, we have to meet with the executive director and CEO, Becky Benet, to learn about the process used to plan the future of our Five Rivers Metro Parks. As the executive director, planning for the future, that seems really daunting. I mean, how do you, how do you prepare for all that? Uh, I love it. <laughs> it's one of the favorite things I like to do in this position is looking forward and you know, building on the past, but understanding what the community wants, because obviously we're here to serve the community. And right. so, um, you know, you cannot stay stagnant and um, people's needs change as well as the community. And so being able to engage with them to find out what's important to them, to make sure that we're meeting their needs and also being able to provide the amenities that may be new to them that they may not know about. Um, and so all of those things go into place with our teams, our staff interacting with the community, interacting with our volunteers, which are truly such a great support mechanism for us, and looking to how do we plan to make sure as time goes on, because it's never the same, um, that we're able to continue not only to meet the needs, but to be able to be financially stable enough to be able to do so. And as you know, we're still recovering from the tornadoes of 2019. And for example, at Wiggers and Gardens Metro Park, we lost tremendous amount of trees and vegetation in that park, as well as our neighbors. And we have focused on restoring that, but it'll take years, because some of those trees were over 100 years old. And they, it's not yeah. just about the trees and taking carbon dioxide out of the air, it's also about habitat for birds and other species that live in those habitats. So again, working within the community together to plant tree seedlings. We grow our own tree seedlings um, at some of our locations and being able to replant them and restore those areas is definitely a focus. As well as just looking at the intensity of storms and what it does, water, how much rain we're getting. Yeah. And you know, some places are in very much a drought uh, 
uh, basis, but here in our area, water right. is our friend, but it can be too much of a friend sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so thank goodness we have the, the dams to help right. protect this area. But just looking at what it does, what how water flows in our parks. So right. as we're looking to uh, update our plans for each of our metro parks, we're looking at the impact of design and what that means for runoff, what that means for vegetation, what that means for habitat. So we take all of those things into consideration as part of the plan process. I I give to the Five Rivers Metro Park Foundation. Thank I'm you. really happy <laughs> that I do. And the one nice thing uh, that I've noticed is I, I get uh, a frequent letter will come my way mm -hmm. and talk about the impact that the dollars make. Mm -hmm. And I really like that. And fantastic swag. Really nice hat, <laughs> a nice t-shirt. It looks good. But you know, it's so much more than that. What sure. can you tell me about? Well, the, the Five Rivers Metro Parks Foundation has really only been around for about six years and didn't exist before. And back in, gosh, I think it was 2012, we identified that there were a lot of people who were interested in trying to help continue to support the Metro Parks beyond the levy. And we also saw that our financial portfolio, where we got our revenue, had, was changing over time and, and becoming less and less. So we had to figure out a way to um, be able to do projects or programs or provide services that we otherwise couldn't provide. And that is what the Five Rivers Metro Parks Foundation has done. Uh, tr all volunteers, their sole mission is to support projects, services, and programs. And they've done a tremendous job in a very short amount of time. So we are so proud to have them as part of our organization. Yeah, we're lucky we have them. Yep. And special thank you to the Five Rivers Metro Parks Foundation for supporting the Dakota Nature series. In this series, we took you back to the 1913 flood and learned about the grassroots movement of the garden clubs that worked to establish our park system. We explored the conservation of different ecosystems and habitats. We took a look at natural surface trails and of course our paved trail network that is the largest in the nation and saw the evolution of our urban parks. I've never felt more connected to nature than I do now. Continue to get outside and explore your Five Rivers Metro Parks.